Hi there, Bob Gager from Adobe here. Here's a technique I like to call pumpkin art. We're going to start off with a picture of a pumpkin. Pretty easy to go capture. Lots of pumpkins available this time of year. And I've got another shot open of a picture of my daughter Alyssa and myself uh, taken this last summer. And what we want to do is superimpose this picture on top of our pumpkin. Well, it's actually pretty easy to do in Photoshop Elements. First thing we need to do is get both images in the same file. So down here in the Layout menu, I want to select all column, and that puts the two images side by side. And I can either select the image of my pumpkin, you can tell I've got my pumpkin layer over here on the right, or I can select this image of me and Alyssa. So with this image of me and Alyssa selected, I just want to drag this thumbnail layer from there and drop it right on top of my pumpkin. And so now you can see I've got this photo of Alyssa and myself in the same file as my pumpkin. I can go ahead and close this original image now so that I'm just working with one file. You can see I've now got two layers, my pumpkin layer uh, and my Bob and Alyssa layer. So I can move this around, kind of drag it exactly where I want. Don't have to be perfect just yet. Maybe if it's the wrong size, like this actually is just a little smaller than I want it. So I can grab the corner and just drag up and go ahead and hit the green check mark to resize that layer inside this image. All right, so here's where some of the magic starts to happen. With this layer selected, I'm going to come up to my filter menu, and I'm going to come down to sketch, and I'm going to pick one of my favorite filters, something called graphic novel. And the graphic novel filter will open up and pre-apply one of the four presets to this shot of uh, me and Alyssa. I'm going to go ahead and click one-to-one -one down here in the bottom so I can zoom in and kind of see the results at a little better resolution. And then I can click around these presets, find the one that I like, and then do some fine-tuning. Well, I'm going to start with the one called Fine Detail and then make a couple adjustments. This Clean Look slider, I want to drag that all the way to the right and clean things up a little bit. Darkness, I want it just a little darker than it is right now. Not much. I want this real sort of stark, high contrast difference between some of the lines uh, and some of the skin tones. Have the skin tones be completely white. And then I can play around maybe with thickness to get the look I want. Maybe a little thicker, a little less thick. It's really going to depend on the photo that you're working with. So I adjust the sliders to get a look similar to this and then go ahead and click OK. And Photoshop Elements will apply that filter to just this layer. So that's the first bit of magic. The second bit of magic is this little pull down right here. You may have never even noticed this. It normally says normal. This is something that we call blending modes. And if I click on the blending mode pull down and come down to multiply, what I'm doing is changing the blending mode of this layer, this picture of myself and Alyssa, to be something called multiply. And so those two layers are now blended together a little bit differently. And I can mess around, position this where I want it, maybe rotate it a little bit because uh, I want it kind of at a similar angle as my pumpkin, and still maybe even make it a little bigger because we're still kind of small compared to the size of our pumpkin. Maybe something like that. And then go ahead again, click the green check mark to accept my changes. And then one more piece of filter magic. I want to come back to my filter menu and I want to go down to the distort category and pick spherize. The spherize filter lets me make my image look like it's sort of wrapped around a sphere. And so zoom out so you can see your whole image. I can either pinch it in or wrap it around the outside of the sphere. Again, this is going to depend on your image, exactly how much you want to use. Uh, in the case of my image, about maybe 90% or so looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that will spherize that layer that I had selected, make it look like it's kind of wrapped around the pumpkin. Uh, a little too big now, so I want to shrink it back down, kind of get the sizing just right. I can move it around, maybe something like that. And again, the green check mark to accept those changes. And now I want to get rid of some of this extra stuff that's outside the pumpkin. I could just grab my eraser tool, of course, and erase that part of the image. But what I want to do is use a layer mask. So with this layer selected, click this little icon here. That adds a layer mask. And with my layer mask selected, I know it's selected when I have this blue square around the outside. 
I want to get my brush and I want to paint with black. So make sure your foreground color is black and then just paint on the layer mask. And that effectively erases the image. But the beauty of using layer masks instead of just using the eraser tool is if I make a mistake, like I do something like that, instead of painting with black, I can switch so I can paint with white and then I can paint back in that layer. So with a little bit of layer mask painting, I can fine tune exactly where this image is showing on the pumpkin or not and get kind of a fun look like that. I can also clean up some edges, this stuff around the back of my head that was in the picture. I don't really want that in here, so I can clean that up some. Something like that. And this stuff above Alyssa's head, I don't really want that either. So I can spend some time with my, uh, my paintbrush and my layer mask and really clean up the image to be just the part of the image that I'm interested in having here. Something like that. Clean up that a little bit. All right, and maybe even the bottom, clean up the bottom a little bit. All right, so there we go. So now we've got this image feeling like it's a bit superimposed on top of our pumpkin. That's kind of cool. But we want to do one more thing to make it look even better. So the first thing I want to do over here on my layer panel, I want to grab this thumbnail right here and just drag it up to my new layer icon and let go. And that's simply going to duplicate my layer. So I've now got two layers that are exactly the same. This one on the bottom. I want to select that and then back up to filter one more time to the adjustments category and select invert. So I go ahead and select invert. Makes my photo look pretty ugly at this point, but with one more step, changing the blending mode from multiply to color dodge, I get kind of a glow. Now let me turn off this layer so you can see it, right? So instead of uh, sort of black ink on my pumpkin, I've got this glow. Again, I could clean things up by painting on the mask if I wanted. Let me turn this layer back on. And now with this layer, my glowy layer selected, grab my move tool and just move it down a couple pixels and to the right a couple pixels. So it's not exactly underneath the black layer. It's a little off to the side. And so you can see if I turn that layer off, there's just this top layer. Turn that back on. It's a layer that's kind of underneath, giving a little bit of glow to my image. And then I can fine tune it by changing the opacity and get it looking exactly like I like. So whether I like it's kind of a glowy look to my pumpkin carving or this look with the darkness on top of it as if I had spent a bunch of time giving my pumpkin a tattoo, I can get exactly the look that I want in Photoshop Elements. So there you go. That's how we create some pumpkin art in Photoshop Elements. Take care.